Welcome back to Futures with Ben Lichtenstein. Traders, the dollar's on the move higher to start the week off. Well, well off those lows, I should say, from last week. And back to that mid-95 handle. Let's welcome in our next guest to Futures with Ben Lichtenstein for a look at the greenback and the other foreign currency markets. Traders, this morning, we're joined by Alan Nuckman, the chief market strategist at Agora Financial. Alan, thanks for coming on this morning. I want to talk the U.S. dollar, but first the Aussie dollar, because it seems to be the focus this morning. The Royal Bank of Australia left rates unchanged last night at 1.50%, and the Aussie posted a new 2018 low in reaction to the decision. Alan, did you have time to look at the statement? And if so, did you see if they happened to say anything or, or what they said that uh, uh, kept them hesitant and why they decided not to raise the rate? That's a mystery to me. Um, so I'm not sure about exactly what the statement has said, but you know we've seen a little bit of a drift in the Aussie, which typically tracks with the Canadian dollar as a commodity currency. That has been disconnected here recently. Uh, and uh, even though the gold markets and the metals and miners have firmed up off the, you know, off the one year plus lows, you haven't seen the Aussie uh, rally back. So the price action has not been very positive and now you're seeing it drift lower. You're seeing a lot of overnight action in some of these emerging markets. I wouldn't put Australia in a, a, as an emerging market currency, but you're seeing some of these emerging markets uh, currencies suffer once again. And that's getting, giving us a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a downdraft here in the market today. Alan, how much of this is just trade uncertainties, do you think? A lot of that could be, uh, but let's remember, shake it off summer just ended. So we've been able to shake off all this tariff talk. You know, the stock markets continue to make new highs, new records last week, and, uh, you know, amazing resiliency in the face of this. So, again, uh, we'll have to wait and see uh, what actually comes of this. Uh, are, this more, are these just more threats that the market prices in immediately, the worst case scenario? And then we've seen time and time again where we just bounce back and uh, shake it off once again. Yeah, you know, you're talking about shaking it off. I'm looking at the Canadian dollar. I'm looking at the Mexican peso. It seems like they're having a bit of a tough time right. shaking off some of the concerns there. What are you seeing there, uh, Alan? So far, let's let's speak about so far. So, you know, obviously we had a little bit of a bounce with the HAFTA uh, discussion last week where half of NAFTA is partially solved. Uh, so we'll see what happens with Canada. A lot of tough talk once again. Uh, but... You know, I have to use the but, you know, everything that we've seen over the last, uh, let's just say, 18 months, but especially the last six months, with the very tough talk about, you know, uh, you know, getting rid of agreements and so forth, has not had a negative impact. Uh, and, and, you know, it, 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 the way I look at it, you know, if you looked at this five years ago, the markets could be significantly lower with just this, this just these threats. Uh, but that hasn't happened. So for me, it's almost as important what didn't happen as what has happened here in this environment. Yeah, Alan, do you think that's partially due to the kind of on again, off again and the callous nature uh, associated with our reaction to some of this? Because it's been in the news cycle day in and day out, it seems like, again, one right. day everything's resolved and then the next day trade tariff concerns back on again. Right, and we've talked about, about this before, but I try and have a 48-hour rule. Once something gets announced, let's see where we are 48 hours later, okay. after the market's had a chance to digest it, see where we stand. Um, but again, I think the focus has to come back on you know uh, the stock market, the macro market doing very well, uh, and the growth of that, the global growth, you know, because of the other factors, because of how well corporate America is doing, right. and because of all-time record profits. That's what makes it, you know, that's what makes the market truly. Yeah, even with the dollar hanging out at these 2018 highs, but let's stick with Bank of Canada here for a minute because they've got uh, uh, the Bank of Canada actually meeting to decide our rates here tomorrow. Any expectations for a change there, Alan? Well, we know for a fact that we're going to raise rates in, uh, you know, here in September. So that's a done deal, 97%. Not, not, no, nothing's ever 100%. What I'm focused more on than what Canada is doing is obviously what our dollar is doing. Uh, but then if you go out to December, then there is a 65% chance that we're going to raise rates again in December. Now, even when we do that, to put it in comparison, you know, put it uh, in perspective, we're still only going to be at two and a quarter percent. So uh, rates are still relatively low. Yes, they are inching up around the world, but we're still in a very, very low interest rate environment globally, not just here. So, Alan, with uh, central bank activity coming back around, is this going to be the major focus in September? Or do you see anything else out there that's going to kind of trump some of the uh, attention being directed uh, at rates? 
Uh, I'm, I'm sure you didn't intend to say that, but yeah, there's always going to be something. There's always going to be something. But let's talk about what happened in August. August was one of the best uh, uh, Augusts in since the year 2000 in tech. And if you look at the S&P and the Dow, they had the best uh, best August in, in you know a handful of years. So it was a very strong month. We rebounded, recovered, got back all of our losses, erased all of that February nonsense, and uh, we're up, up, and away. And we've t I've talked about 3,200 is my technical target in the S&P. So wow. I'm still sticking with that. Um, and you know we've seen that every single time on a sell-off. It bounces back the distance of the sell-off on top of that old old high. So uh, I'm looking for that to happen once again. Like I said, corporations are are, are not being impacted yet by uh, by any of this. The, the profits continue to roll and grow. Uh, and so, you know, that's the true measure of the market. So we'll have to wait and see. I mean, there's always possibilities of, uh, of something out there to give the markets a bit, a bit of a shake up. But as a trader, you and I will both agree it's it's not how the part markets act. It's how they react. It's once if something gives us gives us a smack is how does the market react in the days or the weeks following? Does it follow through or not? Let's get back to the dollar. I thought we had a blow off top in the dollar. We very well still may have a, do uh, a top in the dollar. The way that it surged on that turkey top in mid mid August and had that high and then a lower weekly close if you look at that technically look at that chart pattern it looks very ominous uh, for the dollar bulls and I think there's still gonna be a little bit of a squeeze there uh, we got back into that range that we've been trading that we traded in between 94 and a half 95 and a half for for many many weeks now we're now we're still stuck in that range let's see how it reacts where we are by weekend uh, you know the dollar last week was essentially unchanged the euro currency was up to 117 now it's at the 115 handle so Let's wait for the next move. Let's see where we are by, by week's end. And again, I have to remind myself, we only have four trading days this week, so uh, we'll get the information fast and furious. Four trading days and a lot of focus on central bank activity. Again, not only this week, Alan, but next week, Bank of, uh, um, I'm sorry, the ECB will be coming together to talk about okay. their rates as well. But I wanna talk a little bit about that move you just mentioned in the dollar, that blow off top. Well potentially a blow off top there up at 96.86 because that coincided with some weakness that we were seeing in a couple of the other foreign currencies like for example the British pound was coming off at the time into new 2018 lows right. I'm wondering if what we're seeing there in terms of some of the weakness and the the uncertainty associated with that is just kind of fueling the dollar higher and if you expect that to continue basically th there's not a lot of uh, resolution right now in terms of the Brexit situation correct? Correct. Um, so looking at the at the pound, you know, it's hanging around at this 128 level. Looking at the euro currency, it did make a bottom, you know, a, a direct bottom when the dollar made new highs. So obviously that relationship, that inverse relationship is very, very, very much intact. Uh, again, let's see. Last week was essentially uh, a nothing week. We're looking at the currencies net net, you know, no no movement. So let's see what happens this week. If uh, they can build on a downward momentum in the dollar uh, or if it's going to firm up once again. That's that's really what I have to sit back and wait and see and not try and uh, not try and anticipate. The markets will tell us we just have to we just have to look and uh, you know, and, and, and take a look at, at that picture and, uh, you know, get a better idea where we're going from there. But if we want to translate that in interest rates, we talk about short term rates, but we're still stuck in that range on the 10 year note between 119 and a half and 120 and a half. So it's been, you know, a, a month. A month in this one, you know, this one point range, which is a thousand dollars between the high and the low, and with the uh, a little bit of the volatility that we're seeing here today, uh, you're not seeing th uh, that much of a bid higher uh, in that 10-year note. I used to use the 10, you know, the 30-year as my indicator of uh, of money flow, of volatility. Uh, back before we watched the VIX, uh, we would look to see if the money flow was in that, if there if there was a shift from stocks into bonds. And you're not seeing that today, so uh, we're a little bit of a downturn in stocks. And again, a lot of that happened the last couple hours. Last night, uh, you know, late last night, the, the, the stock market, stock futures were, were very strong. Let me just mention one thing about the VIX because it does correlate, like I said, is a safety. Uh, it, it, it views the money flow. If you look at the VIX, it's interesting that we've been making new highs in the stock market, but we're not anywhere close to the the lows in the VIX. So the VIX has been moving opposite. Uh, has, I'm sorry, been moving in t in moving higher when the stock market is moving higher. When it, it, the reality is, you know, 90% of the time it moves inversely. So that's maybe a sign there's there's some bumpiness ahead. But let's let the markets tell us. Yeah, definitely something to watch. I was noticing the VIX on the move higher here as well. Alan, we'll keep a close eye on the dollar as well, which has been very strong. 
Traders, that's Alan Nuckman. He's the Chief Market Strategist at Agora Financial. Joining us this morning, Alan, thanks a lot. Really appreciate it.